Is this a result you had all expected coming into these championships, noting that you had never made a world championship or Olympic final before this? Raven, you looked out of that race at 150 meters. How did you turn it around? Um, just reflecting on that 150 meters, um, I just had to really be patient. Um, running in, running on the same track in May really helped kind of test the waters and learn some things from uh, just running on this track. And so I was able to kind of carry that experience into this weekend and uh, really um, not only learn from the Diamond League in May, but also through the rounds just where I wanted to kind of form my race. Um, that kind of helped contribute to the last one. Larry Leader from Blog One. Ashe, can you take this through your race and tell us how it went for you? Um, the first quarter um, kind of went split, just about getting out. Um, you know, I didn't want it to be as cool as it was in the past, the first two rounds, like 59-60. Um, felt good through five, <clears throat> um, picked up a little bit with, I think, like 253 to go, and that last, I'd say, would be. I, that was all I had, so um, it was just about, you know, trying to stay to the end. The day before the meet started, there was um, a couple medal reallocation ceremonies for your fellow women's 800 meter runners from the U.S. Um, I know in 2013 you were in that final, weren't in position to a medal, um, to be a medalist, but you kind of covered the era of you know, that type of scandal where people are getting reallocated to now this modern area. And I'm curious if you think the sport has been cleaned up since then and we are kind of in the past of these, you know, series of metal reallocation ceremonies that like the ones we had today. Another question? First row. Ladies, I'm, I'm sure that all of you are as tired of answering this question as we are of asking it, but this race did not feature Caster, nor Francie, nor Margaret. What did it feel like to line up without any or all men in the race, and now that you are here on the podium and they are not, how does that feel? Okay, to my side, I always leave a change. Once the change is made, I just need to focus what's on the ground. So I just, me, I just focus on my own task at that specific time. So I couldn't focus on Casta or New Zealand. Thank you. Uh, for me, I, was, I feel like uh, in response to that situation era. Um, it's a little different, but it's, it, I feel like it hasn't directly affected me because I'm, I've kind of been, there's, a, there's been other great competitors that are like on their level as well or still ahead of me. Um, so it was just more so focused on um, just trying to make my way to the top as close as I could um, just with the competitors that were in front of me because it's not like I was in range to sit um, behind me as I were a cast or anything. I still have competitors that were still in front of me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry, can you say the question again? <laughs> sure. Not, none of them are here. Oh, okay. I remember. I got you. Yeah. Um, Kind of just what both of them were saying, you know, every every race is different anytime anyone is missing. So for me, it's just about focusing on who's on the line, focusing on, um, you know, what 
my goals are in, in this race of the student, regardless of who's there telling the work. Yes, Raven again. Um, a few years ago, you set what's still a world age 12 best. When you were a little girl, did you ever think that you were going to be sitting up here getting a silver medal around your neck? What were your ambitions, if you can remember, as a 12 year old? It's um, funny that you bring that up. Um, as a 12 year old, I feel like I, I don't think I would have been able to expect this to happen so quickly. Um, when I'm very humbled to even be in this experience um, because it's definitely a blessing to be in this experience, being this, having this opportunity and being, having accomplished this. Um, I don't know, I, I just, it's, the whole experience is really surreal to me right now. I haven't really channeled everything that's happening, but I can definitely say that I don't think I would have expected this to be as soon as it was. Um, being at 12 years old, I just try to keep that same um, ambitiousness and working hard um, without even asking questions, just trying to go after it and aim high. Uh, Jonathan Goldman from Let's Run Back Home. Question for Halima. You were only eighth in the Diamond League in Birmingham and third in the African Games. How did you go from those results to becoming world champion? What changed since then? Every competition, I've been learning out of it. And by now, every competition, I've been learning out of it. And by now, I was in good shape. But I, there were some mistakes I made by finishing number eight. But there is always a team which is working hard to start I progress. So, global sports communication, my coaches, they sat together and revised the mistakes I always make. So, still, when I went to African Championship, I was in good shape because all along I've been preparing so hard with my team. But still, I got bronze. Still, there were mistakes that I made. I, I slowed down the first lap, so and I ended up getting bronze. So, still revised the mistakes, and I always had to be focused to keep on targeting higher and higher. So I'm so pretty great to this day, but that's so hard. Do you train with money? Yes. We are training partners, we are sisters, it's now like two of years we're doing together. Yeah. One last question. Yes or no? We turn to the man. So that will be all. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to take a point, you can 